strong men five ways. People's president, the lead Indonesia, Jakarta, Indonesia in the final moves of Indonesia's presidential campaign, one candidate asked to Saudi Arabia to meet its king and perform a minor pilgrimage. The other attended a feline photography exhibition and people with the light at a giant photo of his own pet cat. For the world's most populous Muslim majority nation, the message intended by President Joko Joko Iwidodo trip to the birthplace of Islam was obvious after a campaign in which conservative opponents tried to discredit him as insufficiently Islamic. What his challenger for a second time, former Special Forces General Pravolo Subianto, meant was less apparent. But it presented a softer version of the candidate prone to explosions of anger who had flown around Indonesia in a private jet even as he said he was campaigning for the poor. About 193 million Indonesians are eligible to vote in presidential and legislative elections Wednesday that will decide who leads a nation that's an outpost of democracy in a neighborhood of authoritarian government and is forecast to be among the world's biggest economies by 2030. Their choice is between five more years of the steady progress achieved under Indonesia's first president from outside the Jakarta elite for election a charismatic but volatile figure from the era, the Suharto military dictatorship that ended two decades ago. The 2014 election of Widodo, a furniture exporter whose political career started as a small city mayor, was a manifestation of the new Indonesia, of the land of opportunity in which the democratic opening has made it possible for anyone to come up to the top, said Yuri Fortuna Enward, a politics expert at the Indonesian Institute of Sciences. If Jokowi wins again, clearly that is a continued reaffirmation of that as well as an endorsement of his track record for the past five years, she said. Surveys show with Odo with a lead of up to 20 percentage points over Subianto. But the pollsters and commentators are nervous, afraid they might be failing to capture facts on the ground in the same way opinion surveys misjudged the 2016 U.S. presidential election and UK referendum on European Union membership. The enthusiasm that Widodo generated in the 2014 campaign was far less evident this year apart from the final major rally at a Jakarta stadium which attracted well over 100,000 fervent supporters about the same as Subianto a week earlier at the same venue. He is the best leader that the Indonesian people have ever had, very simple, not arrogant and we know what he has done for our country, that's why, Muscatarini, one of the tens of thousands who passed the stadium for Widodo's rally. The Kairi and Conti, at a rally Saturday for Subianto's running mate, said he wants a president who will fight for our rights and stand behind people, who will lower prices, especially education, fuel and basic needs. Election day results that are tighter than Widodo's narrow 2014 victory over Subianto are quite possible because the poll haven't been able to capture the grassroots dynamics said Alexander Erikanto, a researcher at the S. Razorade Non-School of International Studies in Singapore. Kuzianto's campaign has had more deal and fear than Joko East Side, he said. Hardline Islamic groups that were behind NASA's 2016 street protests against Jakarta's Lodoga Lai governor have campaigned effectively for Kuzianto for months, Erikanto said. And there is anecdotal evidence, he said that some Kuzianto supporters are not declaring their true voting intentions in surveys. Widodo has tried to neutralize the not a real Muslim whispers with the selection of Mera Amin, the leading Islamic cleric in Indonesia, as his running mate, so he also risked alienating progressive and moderate supporters. His weekend dash to Saudi Arabia appeared to be when last pushed to shore up the pious Muslim vote. Widodo and his office tweeted photos of the meeting with King Salman, a popular figure in Indonesia, and, dressed in white robes, performing the minor drills on the Zoom Mecca. Well is this the photo of Bobby? It's very nice, Kubianto said Sunday, while giggling and pointing at the photo, a statement said. A strident nationalist, Kubianto has run a fear-based campaign, highlighting what he sees as. Indonesia's weakness and the risk of exploitation by foreign powers for disintegration. His ultra-nationalist tactics preceded President Donald Trump's polarizing rhetoric by several years and the party he founded in 2008, Jorinda, is officially known as the Greater Indonesian Movement. 
annual FEPA former general campaign is a way run of 2014, where he was basically stoking the emotions, the fear that Indonesia was being taken over by foreign interests. The country is basically a basket case, that things are going to get worse unless a firm handler is at the helm. Widodo, meanwhile, has highlighted his progress in improving Indonesia's inadequate infrastructure with new ports, toll roads, airports, and mass rapid transit which became a reality last month in chronically congested Jakarta. Economic growth has been stable with unspectacular and inflation is low, maximizing the impact of poverty alleviation programs. Last, thank you for watching. Please subscribe.